Uncover the story of Nauru, once a phosphate-rich island nation that soared to wealth, now facing the challenges of sustainability. Join us as we explore Nauru, the world's third smallest country, where cultural diversity and historical significance paint a complex picture. From environmental trials to economic transformations, we are diving deep into the heart of Nauru's story. Nauru is a tiny island country located in Micronesia in the central Pacific Ocean with an area of just 21 square kilometers. It is the smallest republic in the world and the third smallest country behind Vatican City and Monaco. Nauru is situated around 42 kilometers south of the equator in the region of Oceania known as Micronesia. It sits in the central Pacific Ocean around 3,300 kilometers northeast of Australia. Its nearest neighbors are Banaba Island to the east and the Solomon Islands to the southeast. With no official capital city, the government offices are located in the Yaran district. Nauru is a raised coral island made up almost entirely of phosphatic rock from marine bird droppings. A sandy beach rises to a fertile ring around a rocky coral plateau in the island's center. The highest point on Nauru is just 65 meters above sea level. There are no natural harbors or rivers, and the only fertile areas are where phosphate mining has exposed limestone outcrops. Decades of intensive phosphate mining have taken a major toll on Nauru's environment. Over 80% of the island has been environmentally destroyed by strip mining. This has left behind barren and rocky limestone pinnacles that are up to 15 meters high. Mining has also contaminated over 60% of Nauru's underground fresh water. The island originally had dense vegetation, including palm trees and hardwood forests, but these have almost all been destroyed. Nauru is one of the smallest nations on Earth, but its people possess a rich culture and history. Ethnically, the population of Nauru is predominantly of Nauruan descent. The indigenous Nauruans are believed to be of Micronesian origin with some Polynesian influence. Intermarriage with European whalers and traders introduced other ethnicities into Nauru over the last couple of centuries. Today, around 50% of Nauruans are of mixed ethnicity. Christianity is the main religion today, with two-thirds of Nauruans identifying as Christian. Missionaries introduced the faith in the late 19th and early 20th century. The main Christian denomination is the Nauru Congregational Church, which blends Protestant theology with indigenous beliefs. Smaller numbers of Nauruans are Catholic or Mormon. The Nauruan language is the official and most widely spoken language used in Nauru. It is spoken by 96% of the population as their first language. Nauruan is an Austronesian language that's closely related to other Pacific Island languages. It has adopted some vocabulary from English and German. English is also widely spoken and is the language of government and commerce. The remote Pacific island nation of Nauru has a unique cuisine that blends native foods with foreign influences. Here are popular and iconic Nauruan dishes that offer a tasty glimpse into the island's culture and history. Fresh reef fish is wrapped in banana leaves and coconut milk, then cooked slowly over coals in a ground oven. The coconut milk keeps the fish moist and infuses it with sweetness. It's a classic Nauruan preparation for fresh caught fish. This chilled coconut and milk mousse gets its airy texture from whipped egg whites. Sometimes vanilla is added for extra flavor. It's a light dessert that shows the influence of European cooking techniques. Nauru was first inhabited by Micronesian and Polynesian seafarers around 3,000 years ago 
These first settlers were likely from the Marshall Islands to Nauru's northeast. They lived in family groups and subsisted as fishers and farmers. Traditional indigenous life continued with little outside contact until the 1830s. The first Europeans to arrive were British whaling ships and traders in the 1830s, who made the island a popular stopover. Germany annexed Nauru in 1888 and exploited it for its phosphate deposits used for fertilizer. After World War I, Australia was given the responsibility of governing and developing the country by the League of Nations. During World War II, Japan occupied Nauru and deported many Nauruans to labor camps. After World War II, the United Nations made Nauru a trust territory under joint Australian, British and New Zealand authority. Nauru achieved independence in 1968 and began exporting phosphate on its own, bringing great wealth. However, profits went mostly to foreign managers and investors. In the 1990s and 2000s, poor investments and corruption bankrupted Nauru. It turned to money laundering and housing of Australia's asylum seekers to generate income. Meanwhile, decades of intensive phosphate mining left over 80% of Nauru's landscape environmentally devastated. Today, Nauru faces environmental and economic challenges. It is working to rehabilitate mining lands, build a sustainable economy, and maintain its sovereignty and culture. For around a century, phosphate mining was the mainstay of Nauru's economy. Phosphate deposits on the island are of very high quality, and extensive mining made Nauru one of the richest countries on a per capita basis by the 1980s. In the 1990s, bad investments and years of government corruption led to economic collapse in Nauru. It defaulted on debts and saw living standards plunge. With phosphate reserves dwindling, the mining sector declined. The government of Nauru tried to make money by operating refugee detention centers, and it's causing a lot of ethical worries. In these centers where people who are seeking safety stay, there are big concerns about how they're treated. Reports say that the living conditions are not good. With overcrowding and not enough health care or education, it's especially worrying for kids and vulnerable people. Also, the process of figuring out if an asylum seeker can stay in the country was unclear, with some people being held for a long time without knowing the outcome of their refugee status. Besides all this, the government using these centers to make money is causing even more problems. It seems like they're putting profits before giving people adequate living conditions. The whole world is watching and saying it's not right, and it's making everyone think about how refugees should be treated. Today, Nauru's economy centers on public sector jobs some mining, fishing licenses, and development assistance. With very few natural resources left, Nauru imports most goods, including food and fuel. Unemployment is extremely high at over 90%, and the country relies heavily on aid from Australia. Nauru faces serious environmental and economic challenges today due to its history of phosphate over-exploitation it is working to rehabilitate mining lands, build renewable energy, develop tourism, and reduce reliance on imports and aid. Diversifying the economy and achieving greater self-reliance will be key going forward. If you enjoyed this video on Nauru, you'll love this next one.